Did God change his mind when he gave blacks the priesthood? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining us and spending some time with us. We have today Shane Shradley. Yes. From, uh, we're still in Idaho, and uh, as I've said, it's just beautiful country up here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess you've seen it all as you've traveled around, and yeah, beautiful be Snake River is here. and Baptized in the snake. Were you really? Yeah. Okay. Is that as a Mormon or a Christian? As a Christian. Okay, good for About you. About 15 years ago. <laughs> All right, well, as we usually do, we get started with your background. Are you, where were you born and raised? Um, Dad was in the Navy, so I was born in Long Beach, California. Wow. And so as a Navy kid, you know, yeah. five kids in the family, we traveled around, but every time he got an opportunity, because all our roots are right in Ogden. Oh, are they? So, yeah, all the, all the grandparents were in Ogden, and so we got to spend three years when I was a little kid in Provo okay, because um, he was a recruiter there. Yeah. And then in my junior high school years, we moved back from Virginia to, to Sunset. Utah, huh? Sunset, Utah. And that's, yeah. that's where I got introduced essentially to Mormonism. Oh, it was. Huh? Mm -hmm. Well, and you, w your folks were Mormon? My mom was, was uh, born Mormon. Yeah. I've got uh, her, her whole family. Uh, settlers of uh, Hooper. Oh yeah, um, out there. Pioneers. That's close to sunset too. Isn't yeah. It? So too? so so. On that side, we. Yeah. Dad's side, heathen forever. <laughs> heathen forever. <laughs> and still heathen. <laughs> and still heathen. I'm sure they'll appreciate that. So when you say get exposed to Mormonism, what did what what happened, or what were you learning? When I was when I when I when I first moved to Sunset, I was a uh, you know around just out of sixth grade going into seventh grade. Okay. Junior high school years, and I made some friends that were into basketball and into Boy Scouts and into the activities, and oh, so, so I wanted to be part of the activities. Yeah, gotcha. So through participation, when you do those activities, you also hang out and go to church with them on Sunday. Right. So you end up uh, <laughs> going through the motions of all the different things because all these activities happen at the church. Wow. And so that's how I got involved. And so you were baptized at what age? Oh, I, it was probably around the eighth grade. My dad had a rule. He said he was not letting anybody baptize us till we were ready. No one else was making right. that decision. So I actually had to sit down and have a conversation with my dad and say, this is this my wishes. About this age is 13 or 14 this is, yeah, or so. This is what I want to do. And, 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 then he, let and you he was good with it as long as I was making the decisions. Okay. So, and so were you active then after that? You went to church? I was, I was active all through junior high school. I, I did everything that you could do. Seminary? And the seminary. Whole I, was, I was the vice president <laughs> of seminary really? in the ninth grade. Oh, okay. At Sunset Junior High School, I was... <laughs> I was, I was it. I was having fun. It was interesting. Yeah. Um, it's amazing because you learn things, you never forget them. Yeah. It's just, you know, we, we did the New Testament then. And really? I, I still can remember lessons and classes from that New Testament. Hmm. And I, I believe as I talked to you earlier, where we uh, you had a testimony of the church. Mm -hmm. You believed it was true and well, Joseph uh, Smith and... That, that, was, that was part of the routine. I mean, when you went yeah. to church, you went to sacrament, and, yeah. and you go to sacrament, and you see everybody's standing up, and they're bearing their testimony, and mm -hmm. you're, okay, trying to find out what they're talking about. You know, who's Joseph Smith? Who's Brigham Young? And by, by this time, I got it all figured out, sure. and I know, and I'm, I'm doing the same thing. I'm standing and saying it and feeling it and getting <laughs> in, and I'm, I'm all in. Yeah. So, so what, uh, what happens after this, after... Between ninth and 10th grade, junior high school to high school, um, my dad retired out of the military, oh, out of okay. the Navy. So we moved over to Layton, which is only 10 miles away. Right. And, but that took me from going to Clearfield High School to Layton High School. Okay. So I have none of my old friends. I have a whole, I have no core of friends. Oh. And when I get there, I go find the church that, you know, because you're set to a specific church and sure. I'm in a brand new neighborhood, a brand new community, a brand new house. And the church is three miles up the road. And, and, and 
I hike up the road to the church and they don't have a basketball court. I don't know anybody. I hiked three miles home. I did that twice and I was done. Oh. I just didn't fit in. Yeah. And I had no Mormon friends in Layton. I don't think I ever had a Mormon friend in Layton. <laughs> really? And there are lots of them there, I'm sure. Yeah, but... yeah. So did you ever go back to church um, later in life? Just, just off and on and, yeah. you know, here and there. When, when I actually later in life, when I started looking for Jesus, um, we're talking 15 years ago, I went to the Mormon church because... That's where you thought it, he was. No, no, I was trying to find out where he was. Oh, okay. And I went there, and and that wasn't it. What happened? It just, it was the same thing as it was 12, 13 years earlier. <laughs> I, uh, and, and, you know, it's funny, though, is I went to church with my mom. And my mom now is Mormon. She's divorced, remarried. Okay. They're... Uh, very active, I guess. Yeah, so. very active, doing all the stuff. And... I go to church and I'm down in Clearfield now and I go to church and it's the exact same lesson I had like two weeks earlier oh. up here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of depends on when state conference falls. They were just, they were, yeah, they were just, they were just a couple weeks behind. I'm like, I already know the answers. The other guy did a better job than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you already know the answers. <clears throat> but it was funny. I, 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 I was not comfortable. I knew that wasn't it. And, and at this time I was a heathen. I was really, okay. I had, I had, I had, when, when, when I had walked away from Mormonism, I started studying just a little bit, but somewhere along the way, I realized that it wasn't real. It wasn't true. And I had the evidence to prove that it wasn't real and it wasn't true. And in that evidence, along with that evidence, I, I, I took that evidence to know that Joseph Smith was not a prophet of God, that the Book of Mormon wasn't the Word of God. And from that, I denounced Mormonism. I denounced God. Because yeah. I was under the opinion that if, 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 if you're not a Mormon, then you're not allowed to follow God. <laughs> and and I, I, put, I put Jesus into a fictitious ring with the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus and every, the Tooth Fairy and everything else. Well, it happens so often. We hear uh, people are leaving the church, and they do leave Jesus and God. Mm -hmm. They become atheist, agnostic. Mm -hmm. And they really don't have that relationship with Jesus. They mm -hmm. don't take him with them. Mm -hmm. They just, if the only true church isn't true, uh, then, then nothing's true. And, and that's exactly how I perceived it and walked away from it. It's, I, I, I always had a, this, I always felt the Mormons were doing a good job. It was a great community to get raised up in. Yeah. A good place to be. And, and that's what I would tell people. It's a good place, but the religion isn't real. <laughs> and I, as, as, as an ex-Marine, I attacked Mormonism like no other. If, if, if somebody would say, You're, could you please not use the Lord's name in vain? That just opened up the doors for me just to go on to full assault. <laughs> and, and, and so, I mean, I'm king of the heathens and showing no respect at all. And, but with that, you know, you go on with life, things happen. I, I move up here, I've got a w wonderful heathen wife and I've got my, you know, heathen house. And, and I say heathen with respect because it's the only way I know to explain it. It's the opposite of God, you know? Right. <laughs> and so after your time in Layton, then you marry then? And are you married at this point or? I've been married a couple times. Okay, but you try to go to, back to the Mormon church. That doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, anyway, so you, you, eventually you get back here to Idaho, I guess. I, I'm in Idaho now, okay. yes. I, 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 I've been in Idaho for 25 years now. Okay. And, and I'm up here, and, and like I say, for 10 years I'm doing my thing, but it falls apart. And I end up uh, knowing there's something more. And I'm getting ready to go through a divorce, and I've got kids, and, and I realize I don't have the answers. I don't have a clue. Really? So I start searching, and, and I mean, I'm getting up on Sunday morning, and I'm drunker than a skunk still. <laughs> oh, and I'm getting my kids dressed, and I'm taking them to whatever church we can find so we can try to figure out, so I can try to figure out what's going on. And we hit two or three different churches, and it's not working. <laughs> I, 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 and, and when I say it's not working, I, I just, I know I'm searching for more. 
Yeah. And I ended up in a church in Twin Falls, a big church over here in Twin Falls. Uh, it was the lighthouse. And, and, and I could get into there and he was preaching from the Bible. And, and just like usually, you know, they'll have altar calls. And after I was there about 10 times and after I'd read a good five or six books to make sure that what I was thinking, that what I was looking at, to know that what I was doing was right, I accepted Jesus. It was like, I had to know that he was real. I had to know that it wasn't fake. I had to know that what I was doing was solid. Well, that's such an interesting set of experiences. Um, your first inclination was to go back to the Mormon church because you figured God was there. I wouldn't call it an inclination. I would say it was trying to, f I was, yeah, I was trying to figure out yeah. what was going on, you know, and... And then... When you go through ten times, I mean, did you, were you, you went to this church, but did you feel like you were still searching, I guess? You hadn't come up with the answers yet, or? I had come up with enough that I knew that Jesus was real. You did. And from that, that didn't mean I stopped searching. I still haven't stopped studying. I still haven't sure. stopped looking. And, and, and for the average pastor, I'm a pain. <laughs> well, what was that little moment that brought you to Jesus, do you I, think? Was there a moment? Not, not really just a moment, but there's a moment when he let me know. Really? Now, I, was, I, was, um, I was down in Utah at a meeting um, for work, and, and I had to, at this time I was playing management, and I had to get back up to Idaho because I had to go meet with my attorney because of going through the divorce, and I'm driving along the road between here and there. You're going to go right down that same road. You know where the construction is, the turn in the road? Yeah, you, probably. That, that's what I call the turn in the road. Okay. You know? and, and, and I'm coming across, and I, I'm just sitting there weighing, what am I supposed to do? And I'm, I'm talking to God. I didn't realize it, but I'm talking to God. What, how am I supposed to handle this? What am I supposed to do? And a van passes me, and it says in the dirt on the back of the window, he says, read the Bible. <laughs> in the dirt, on the, on the, I, on the window? I, I <laughs> am losing it. I mean, psh, psh, I'm, I don't know what to think. They pull into that little gas station out in the middle of nowhere. I follow them into that gas station. Here I'm, big guy, crying, <laughs> walking up to him, And I say, you got a Bible? <laughs> and they gave you one? They gave me a quad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. But I took that Bible, I said a little prayer, I started driving down the road, and before I got around that bend in the road, I learned what surrender means. I gave, gave it all up. I quit the fight. I just accepted Jesus and let it fall. And with that, you lose nothing. Oh my goodness. So just to, you're praying and struggling and you see this little read the Bible message and, 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 and how harmless is that? Yeah. And yet I, what impact? But, but I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm talking cause I'm, I don't know what to do. You know, I'm worried I'm going to lose my kids. I'm worried I'm going to, you know, how am I going to do all this and let it go. Wow. As soon as they let it go, it, there's a peace. peace came over and yeah. yeah. So that's amazing. That's, that's how he works. So yeah, it's, it's just how he works. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's, it's funny because just like with drinking, I, I, I asked the Lord, I said, I was a Marine. I had a buddy that was my roommate. Whenever he would get in trouble because he'd get in trouble for drinking, he got us in trouble for drinking. <laughs> he would go in and they'd do the little court martial thing and they would make him take this pill called Anabuse. And if he drank one beer, it made him sick like he was going to die. Oh, really? So that's the prayer I said. I said, Lord, make it so that every time I drink a beer, it makes me so sick I never want another one. You got to be careful what you pray for. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't worked. drink anymore. <laughs> oh, good, for, good for you. <laughs> and, you know, and, and over the years, it's 15 years, it's drinking's not a, a sin, drinking's not a, yeah. a, a problem. Not but to keep you out of heaven, but. But if you can't handle it, if you need to be wise, then yeah. ask the Lord to take it away from you, and He will. Did you start going to church then? Oh yeah, yeah. After I've, you, after this, 
roadside experience? Mm -hmm. um, once, once, and I was already going to church straight from the oh straight okay. from the, the ten times into the one church. I, okay. When I quit going to that church, it wasn't because I quit going to church. Oh, I, see. I moved to a church that was closer in my community. Started searching, found a nice little church right down the road, and I spent probably seven or eight years yeah. involved in that church. Okay, got to the point where I was even doing some preaching. Really? Doing a lot of the youth activities, getting involved all kinds of different ways. And from there moved to <laughs> four or five other different churches. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And well, I think that's a great freedom we have to be able mm -hmm. to find a place that fits for us and rather than be pigeonholed into a specific ward or some... The church I go to right now is very small. I mean... But honestly, you're a great support there, I'm sure. I'm you know? not really. I'm just oh. one of. I'm just one of the because of being a gypsy. You yeah. know, we haven't popped in. Oh, okay. But seasonally. Yeah. And now, and now it's like, and and that's what I'm thinking. Is it time to shop? And no, nope, I'm supposed to be right there. Wow. Well, so have you learned a little bit more about Jesus then in the last while? Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> I about ten years ago, I had a. I had uh, questions. I had things that weren't making sense. I felt like things were missing from the Bible. Really? And, and I couldn't figure out what they were. And it, it, and, and it finally came to me, especially like with, with, with the blacks. You know, this book nowhere says that there's a curse on the black man. Nowhere in that book does it say there's a curse on the black man. So when the church came out with their change. But the book of Abraham says that there's a curse on the black man and that yeah. he can't hold the priesthood. And the prophets all say that they can't hold the priesthood, especially when you get to Brigham Young and they get out of Missouri, you get out of that area where they come to hear. Right. Um, they got very verbal. Very about, verbal, very adamant. About it was like, and, and they were, picked a very specific side. And even as growing up as a kid, I was the paper boy. Oh, so I'm delivering the papers, and every time the Ogden Standard Examiner would have an article or something, uh, it was like rogue bishops were baptizing black people in swimming pools. Oh, and I'm really? Like, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know what that means. I don't understand it. <laughs> you know, but, but I'm paying attention. And, 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 and you get to where you see the racism. You see, it, it, it's, not, it's not harsh. It's not ugly, but they're not equal. Yeah, oh, no. And they can't be they equal. They weren't And when you go to church, you're going to hear that they're never going to be equal. And, and this is because it's the law of God. And, then, and, and, and you're like, well, where's that law? Yeah. It's written in the book of Abraham that we know is a fake book. And then in It's suggested in the book of Mormon that we yeah. know is a fake book. Yeah. And then in 1978, they say, <laughs> God changes his mind. Spencer and W. Says, Kimball, who I stood up and said, and I believe Spencer W. Kimball is a true prophet of God. He changed his mind. <laughs> he, he, he said that God changed his mind. Yeah. So. That's crazy. And, 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 I saw you've learned a little bit more about Mormonism since you've been out, too. Yes, yes. So You were mentioning uh, Grant Palmer's book, uh, Insider's View of Mormon. Yeah, I, 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 because of your interviews, I oh. picked that one up two yeah. days ago. Well, I got it, no, yesterday. I got oh, it really? yesterday in the mail. And uh, was just going through it. I read two chapters last night. Yeah. Very fascinating. Mm -hmm. Well, I felt like I could read that book because he was an institute director. Mm -hmm. And so I was reading, again, I didn't want to read any anti-Mormon material, so I read this institute director's perspective of, and boy, did my eyes open. As a Christian, I focused on some of the anti-Mormon material. And the only reason it's anti-Mormon is because it doesn't agree with what they are <laughs> teaching. Right, even and it, it, it might be the those truth. factual, yeah, truth and factual. <laughs> and, 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 and so I read, I read several different books, and, and I was specifically trying to solve specific issues, just um, baptism for the dead, different scriptures, different points that weren't making sense in here. Yeah, because of, don't line up with more because of, Because of the history I had. So I actually had to do some research and separate the two. Oh, and and you've learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's it's funny because even even all these years later, it still has its influence. It still has oh, yeah. its effect. You kind of wonder, well, is that Mormon doctrine, or yes. is that is that from the Bible or mm -hmm. something? Yeah. And so, I I was going to ask you, uh, 
to, uh, you must understand grace now differently than you did as a, a Mormon too, right? Yes. <laughs> as a Mormon, I, I just, you got to remember I was young. Yeah. So I, I, I don't have the temple experience. I don't have the missionary experience. But with that, when you understand who Jesus is, you understand who grace is. Yeah. Or who, what grace is. What grace is. <laughs> and that, comes, that can come at a very early age, too, for people that accept Christ and, mm -hmm. and understand that it's his righteousness and what he did mm -hmm. rather than what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, you, in your family, you've been able to share with them your journey much? My, my family doesn't even want to talk to me. I, I, I talked to my dad about two months ago, and it, it's like they, no one wants to have a conversation for more than a couple minutes because we'll start talking about Jesus. Yeah. Nobody wants to get any Jesus on them. And I'm willing to just <laughs> talk it Jesus. out. Talk Jesus. <laughs> Well, they, I they know it's coming. It's yeah. like, <laughs> well, I don't think they want, really want to spend much time talking religion anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, I, yeah. I, even as a Mormon, we didn't. We talked about who's bishop and who's going on a mission or getting mm -hmm. married in the temple and stuff, but didn't really talk much doctrine and theology. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it may be because they're just our knowledge base is so thin mm -hmm. or so shallow. So uh, when you start talking to somebody they all of a sudden realize that you know a lot more than they do. And I think that makes them uncomfortable. Yeah. See, that's, that's just like to, uh, to come to this interview. I had to break out the Book of Mormon. Oh, you did? Because I wrote some things on that paper that I gave you and I spelled a word wrong. Zenus. Oh. <laughs> Zenus. I, I, was, I was doing it off the, the top prof, of my head. The prophet. Huh? The prophet? Uh, the pretend prophet. <laughs> yeah. I had to, uh, I had to, I, I, what I wrote down, I had to affirm and make sure that I had it right. So I had to go to <laughs> Alma, 20, Alma 32, 33, and, look at the, and look read at about the seed. Oh. Because it's one of those things I had to try to figure out, because this testimony, where everybody is so, you know, believing on the testimony. Yeah. And in Alma, it says, it says he says, and, and now what he's talking about, is the books of Zenus and Zenic, and how they had written that the father had sent his son as a last resort, and that if you planted that seed and you believed that, it would grow. It would grow. And you have to plant that seed and you have to nourish it, and it's your faith. Now, is it going to be truth or knowledge? No, but if you nourish it and and, 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 and work it more, <laughs> it will eventually become knowledge and your faith will become dormant because you know that it's real and you've studied nothing. That the Bible like says, test all things, hold fast that which is good. Yeah. But we can't test that. If you test that philosophy in Alma, it's not biblical. <laughs> you can plant a thorn yeah. and nourish it and it will grow and it will look good and it will be nice. <laughs> and it'll be beautiful till it dries out and you step on it. Yeah. Well, it's like sometimes they say about testimonies, if Mormon testimony, you just say it long enough and you'll have one, you know. Well, that's what Alma says to do. Yeah. Just keep repeating yourself. You and keep you'll repeating eventually, it and you have other people repeat believe. it and you'll believe it. Now, in, in that context, they're talking about Jesus. Yeah. But that context has been taken completely away from Jesus to, and I believe Joseph Smith is a true prophet of God. Really study him. That's the relationship they always make. Yeah. If you study him, you will know that what you know is not real. Well, so what kind of things have you been involved in and, uh, with, with your ministries and uh, in, the, in Christianity? In the last two years, I wrote a book. You did? Yeah. Who's okay. your brother in First John? Oh, um, encourage people to read First John? It's, it's, it's an amazing book. <laughs> um, and all it does, because, because of some of the practices that I used to decipher whether the Book of Mormon was real or not real, yeah. I, I got to where I could see things or believe things or test things. When you start studying certain words or looking at certain phrases, um, only through the Bible, not through scholars, not through somebody else's opinion, just what the Bible says. Um, 
You can't go it, wrong with that. You can't go wrong, and yeah. it says different things. Yeah. And I'm not saying that everybody's lost. I'm saying, and I'm not saying, oh, it's, you know, I don't want to be a crazy guy. I'm not a crazy guy. <laughs> Maybe I am. And, <laughs> but <clears throat> with that, I started just doing some simple reading practices and applied it to First John, essentially using the book, the, the, the New Testament. To, to, to let it the New teach Testament, you what To see saying. what the New Testament says as a novel. Yeah. And it says something a little different. A little different. And every now, in, in, in no way, all it does is glorify Jesus, which right. is awesome. Right. But it... But we miss a little piece. And the more you study, the more you learn, of course. Of course. Yeah. And that's why oh. I say, I, 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 I pretend like I've, I don't know, I shouldn't pretend, I, I think I see something that no one else sees, but I know there's uh, millions of people out there that are like, yeah, yeah. We, we got that down. We just we'll don't, we don't listen to that guy. Look forward <laughs> to seeing the book. So what do you think the Mormons mis most misunderstand about Christians and Christianity? Mm. Any thought on that? I, you kind of mentioned Jesus, of course. Though. Yeah, well, it, I, don't, I don't know where I'd really want to go with that. Yeah, well, I, I just think that, you know, it's funny, Mormons, I think uh, they misunderstand grace. Mm -hmm. They don't understand it the, the way the Bible teaches. They're, they're, they don't trust the Bible, so they don't it, use it's that. It's a works environment. Yeah. You're, 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 you're earning your way to heaven. And I'm, to me, I find that crazy because Jesus came and died on the cross for my sins and to erase the old covenant. I no longer have to come to the priest and bring two doves so he can take one in for himself and one in for me so that I can be forgiven of my sins. I go straight to Jesus. When I sin, I say, Lord, I've messed up. Yeah. I, when I was saved, I said, Lord, you can put me down now. <laughs> I'm big, I'm strong, I'm good. Just a couple days later, I'm Lord, pick me up. I, I pick me up, pick me up. I'm I'm lost. And and after doing that two or three times, I don't ask him to put me down no more. Yeah. Because he is my way. Now with with Mormonism, Joseph Smith has reestablished the old covenant. Essentially, we now have to all those rules and regulations. Follow the rules, follow the regulations, and do all these things to get to heaven. And yeah. You don't have to do that. Right. You have to accept Jesus Christ. And once you and accept it, him, such a he'll start message. doing a work in you. And then, yeah. and then and it's such you know a you're doing that work. <laughs> simple message, isn't it? Just it is. simple, it's, but it, it allows you such freedom and you're free of guilt and judgment. I, I don't mm -hmm. feel as judgmental now and, and there's gives peace. you a peace. I, peace. Yeah, I thought the same thing. And, and, and with that peace, you can start doing things for him. Yeah. With that piece, you, 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 you spend, I, I spend a long time, Lord, what am I supposed to do? Am I, am I supposed to be a pastor? <laughs> I found out real fast I'm not supposed to be a pastor. I don't have a heart for the people. I have a heart for truth. Yeah. So, Lord, what am I supposed to do? What do you want me to do with it? It's like, okay, I wrote a book. <laughs> Well, that sounds, sounds pretty good. Well, we're just about out of time, actually. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to say to your family, friends, and that uh, you think would impact them as they journey through life? I, More than you've already said. Well, I, guess, I try but, to think of who I could actually focus it towards, but no, it's just except Jesus Christ. Look, look to Jesus Christ. If you don't believe he's real, study it, look at it, or ask me. <laughs> it's very, very provable. It's very, yeah. very provable. And the witnesses of the Bible and everything are so, yeah. so strong, so powerful. And that's it. All right. Well, Shane, thanks so much for coming and sharing your story. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, we'll see you next time here on the Ex-Mormon Files.